All right, welcome everybody. Um, we're doing uh, star release problems. We're doing standard two. I'm Mr. Smith. And I am Angel. And we're here to help you solve your star problems. So uh, right now we're looking at standard two. Let's examine what it says. Standard 2.0, students write geometric proofs, scary word, proofs, uh, including proofs by contradiction. So if we look here, standard 2.0, that is these problems here, so that would be four, five, six, and seven. So we'll be doing four, five, and six, and seven from the star packet. Okay, let's start with this one. Theorem, a triangle has at most one obtuse angle. Eduardo is proving the theorem above by contradiction. That means he's going to try to say something against it and then prove that that part is false. He, begin, he began by assuming that in triangle ABC, angle A and angle B are both obtuse. That means each one of them is more than 90 degrees. So he's saying that angle A is greater than 90 degrees, and he's also saying that angle B is greater than 90 degrees. Uh, which theorem will Eduardo use to reach a contradiction? So basically, if they're both more than 90, just think about it for a second. If they're both more than 90, then that would add up to more than 180. But we know triangles add up to 180, so this could never happen. Okay, so let's look for something that, that, that goes along with that logic. If two angles of a triangle are equal, the sides uh, opposite the angles are equal. Well, that's not related. It didn't say A and B are equal. It just said that they're more than 90. So that is definitely not the answer. B, if two supplementary angles are equal, again, nothing here is equal, the angles are each, each measure 90 degrees. Completely, completely irrelevant to what we're reading. C, the largest angle in a triangle is opposite the longest side. Um, well, that's true, but again, it's really not relevant. I think it's going to have to be D. The sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is 180. There it is, because if A is greater than 90 and B is greater than 90, then A plus B is greater than 180. And that's without even having C in there. So if it has to add up to 180, then only one of them can be more than 90 or it'll be too big. So that's the problem. That's why Eduardo's uh, proof by contradiction will, uh, will turn out to fail. So um, we've got it. D is the answer. All right, let's move on to number five. Use the, the proof to answer the question below. Given segment AB is congruent to segment BC. Okay, never, never hesitate to mark what it tells you right in your diagram immediately. Also says that D is the midpoint, midpoint, interesting, of segment AC. That means that this is exactly halfway in here. What that tells us is that these segments are congruent. So now we've got some, some knowledge here. And it says prove triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. Well, we already got two sides congruent. And also, if you notice, BD is shared between the two. So BD is congruent to itself. So with these three things, we already know why this, these two triangles are congruent. So let's read the proof. Statement. <clears throat> uh, segment AB is congruent to segment BC, and D is the midpoint of, of segment AC. That's given. Okay. Segment AD is congruent to segment CD. That's the definition of midpoint. That's why we were able to make these marks right here. Segment BD is congruent to itself, segment BD. That's called the reflexive property. So basically, we just stated what we'd already drawn into the, into the diagram. So, <clears throat> uh, triangle ABD has to be congruent to triangle CBD. Why? Well, let's look at the, at the diagram again. Um, we have one, two, three congruent sides. So that's side, side, side congruence. Okay? So we knew that all along. We just looked for it. A, no, B, no, C, no. It's definitely D, side, side, side. Okay, and that's it for problem five. Moving on to six. In the figure below, AB is greater than BC. So AB is greater than BC. So this one will be greater and this one will be less. Just a quick way to, to keep that in mind. If we assume that measure of angle A equals measure of angle C, so that would mean that the angles are congruent, it follows that AB equals BC. That's true, because if this angle 
is congruent to this angle, then these sides would have to be congruent. It would be an isosceles triangle. This contradicts the given statement that AB is greater than BC. That's right, this one is greater than this one, so they are not congruent. So the, this is a false statement that they are congruent. What conclusion can be drawn? Well, if we know that the sides cannot be congruent, then we know that these angles also cannot be congruent. So the measure of angle A cannot be the same as the measure of angle C. And where do we see that? Measure of angle A equals measure of angle B. No, measure of angle A is not equal to measure of angle B. Measure of angle A equals measure of angle C, or measure of angle A is not equal to measure of angle C. We can conclude that measure of angle A cannot be equal to measure of angle C, because if the sides are not congruent, then the angles cannot be congruent either. And that's it for number six. Moving on to number seven. Use the proof to answer the question below. Given angle two is congruent to angle three, again, we mark these things immediately. We want to prove that angle one is congruent to angle four. So let's check this out. These are alternate interior angles. If the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. If the lines are parallel, then 1 and 4, the alternate exterior angles, will also be congruent. So we already know this, so now we're just going to work through how to write it. So, angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, given. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, well, how do we know this? Um, they're vertical angles, exactly. Vertical angles. And angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, again, vertical angles. So, that's what's missing. Well, that's pretty simple. They're vertical angles. So we're going to say something about vertical angles. Complements of congruent angles are congruent, not relevant. Vertical angles are congruent. That sounds right. Let's just check the others to see if there's something better. Supplements of congruent angles are congruent, not relevant. Corresponding angles are congruent, also not relevant considering the statement. The statement says 1 and 2. 1 and 2 are congruent because they're vertical angles. 3 and 4 are congruent because they are vertical angles. Therefore, vertical angles are congruent is our answer, B. Okay, that does it for standard 2. And that was the proofs. So, um, you know, not too bad. Um, hopefully you got it. Hopefully you rewind if you're having any trouble with anything. Uh, and leave a comment. I'll be checking. I'll, uh, I'll get back to you if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.